Hello, today we're going to talk about solar monitoring. If that's something you're interested in, stick around. If not, goodbye. What up, Geek Squad? Recently in my solar videos where I went through how I set up my hybrid solar power system, talked about the monitoring that I currently use, which is called Watch Power. It's a free open source app that works with a large variety of charge controllers. And one of them just happens to be mine. Well, my primary controller. So I looked around a lot actually to try to find a better way to manage and monitor solar usage, the collection of power, usage of power, how much is wasted, things like that, so that I can better you know, fine tune things and hopefully get more bang for my buck. Down my rabbit hole adventures, I found this. This is Solar Assistant. Modern real-time solar monitoring and control from a Raspberry Pi. Get the most out of your solar investment with our sleek, modern, robust, and powerful platform. No need for expensive sub-optimal monitoring devices. Take advantage of the most powerful, low-cost, and globally available device on the planet, the Raspberry Pi. This looks to be really cool. I've seen a couple of different YouTube videos on it, as well as their, you know, dedicated overview, review, view. And uh, it, it seems very cool because it essentially does real-time analytics within, you know, a couple of seconds. And it's got years of logging available. Now, if it's even the slightest bit faster than the logging app on watch power it's going to make a huge difference huge gonna be huge very big difference because it just takes forever to load any kind of logs or data but this seems to be uh, very gui friendly so it's you know all the data is presented very well it looks like uh remotely adjust inverter settings role-based multi-site access via a single login open data with home assistant integration select your inverter it works with all of these different inverters so mpp solar or um mine is a, a pow mister p-o-w-m-r uh is a variation or a knockoff brand 10 plus years of historical data via interactive charge that's that's powerful. My intentions were to get this set up and logging and to start pulling that data into Grafana to give myself a visualization like a Power BI presentation almost on historical data with trends and charts and things. Uh, that then I could make changes to the settings within the controllers themselves and see how they affect the outcome. It's a standalone system that can be used without the internet. So that's kind of cool. You can essentially plug it in without the syncing to the internet itself. Kind of like Watch Power is, but Watch Power is on a Windows device and I remote into the Windows device to manage and monitor everything. Where this essentially has a URL that you go to, as I understand it. If you're in network, you're able to manage and monitor it. If you're outside of the network, you'll need to, you know what? I don't know. Let's get into it and figure it out sites you have not registered yet oh that's right i haven't registered a couple of ways to do this you can buy a preloaded device which is like a raspberry pi but it's an orange pi same kind of system on chip single board credit card sized micro pc preloaded with solar assistant for 180 bucks. You could download the software only, which is what I did, as an SD card image and load it onto your own Raspberry Pi. Now, you can also buy these different cables and accessories, RS-232 to USB, RS-485 to USB, that's interesting. All of these different cables for the different devices that are compatible with this that you may need to run what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, luckily, it seems like, from what I was reading, my controller can work via USB, so I just plug it into you know the soc controller and it'll start working i don't know we'll have to find out i went on the internet this week and i found this oh. this is an orange pie here we are so if we click on our software only we can see that it's a perpetual license that you're buying for 55 bucks so it's a one-time cost it's not like a you know monthly cost what you'll need is a minimum of a raspberry pi zero recommendation is a raspberry pi zero 2w a 3b or a 4b in the getting started guide and and this is kind of funny because they you know they say they recommend a raspberry pi but buying you can buy the device with them it's an orange pie 
but they specify the Orange Pi 3 LTS or long-term support vision. So jumping over to the quick start guide, if you purchase a complete device, you can skip this article. I didn't, I purchased my own device. Uh, I found the Orange Pi LTS model, the same one that they sell as a, as a kit for like 45 bucks. 55 for the license, 45 for the board. Um, and I think it was like another 10 for the SD card, but I got a 64 gig micro SD card. Hopefully I can log data on this for a very, very long time. How do we get this set up? We're gonna have to open our SD card. We are gonna go ahead and throw it in our SD card reader. So it shows up here. All right, so preparing the device. You know, SD card, I've got a 64 gig, minimum of eight gig, recommended 16. I've got a lot more. Going to step one, if you've purchased the license, go to the site pages, display a link to download the latest SD card image, orange pie image, 700 meg and it's zipped. Hmm. Step two, we're gonna need etcher. Extract your zip file, flash the ISO to an SD card. While we're waiting for that, let's look at the, oh, it's done. We've got our ISO here. Now we're gonna need to, here we are, flash from file. We put on our mass storage device and we'll hit flash. All right, so while this is going, we'll take a look at the orange pie. So it looks to be a little bit bigger well, about the same size of a Raspberry Pi. This only has, I think it said two gigs of low power DDR3, uh, which apparently is enough for what we're trying to accomplish here. So, uh, and it came with a heat sink, a self-adhesive heat sink. So that's kind of cool. All right, flash complete. Now, just like the Raspberry Pi, the SD card reader is on the bottom. There it is, we'll stick it in there. This looks like a little Wi-Fi antenna on the top there, that's nice. So now we have to give it power, I'm assuming over five volts. So, okay, insert card into the Pi, turn it on. It will not display anything on an attached monitor. So we gotta plug it into power, plug it into network, and then we need to activate it. So let's go plug this in and turn it on. Eventually. Here we are again because the Samsung app camera app did not record the first time so i'm repeating everything i just said i'm not bitter not one bit orange pie out here um my ups actually has a dead battery in it so i've ordered the replacement we'll be here till next week of course whatever happened to two-day shipping with amazon am i the only one that next day shipping was the thing i used to get things a lot faster from amazon and all they've done is grow but all I've gotten is a longer lead time for anything I order. Is it just me? So we won't be using this today. I'm gonna just plug it straight to the wall. I've got a, a meter plugged up on. Probably won't even need this if this works as expected. And this thing's such a piece of shit that I haven't received a single HNT coin from this at all, ever, 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 ever. Get that out of the way. So we'll plug it in and a green light should come up on the top. Go ahead and give it ethernet too. Uh, yep, there it is. We'll go back inside and finish doing the setup process on this baby. Uh, we'll go from there. So we've got it plugged in. Now it says to open the link below to find your device on the local network. So we'll do MPP. Oh, I got a I gotta plug in the USB. That's right. Uh. All right, let's try this again. So we've got everything plugged up. We've got the controller plugged into the Orange Pi. We've got the Orange Pi plugged to the internet and power. It recognized it right away. Now we need to activate the device. We're gonna register the device, site owner. All right, so we've activated the device. Once activated, you can select your connected solar equipment and click connect. So we have an MPP solar charge controller, essentially. We'll select inverter, select the interface, which is USB direct. All right, well, so 
What have we done? We've successfully loaded the uh, application onto the SD card and powered the device up, plugged it up to the charge controller, updated and made a couple of changes on settings. Now we wait. We will finish this up tomorrow. We'll come back, we'll take another look and uh, we'll just, we'll see what happens. So um, we'll be back. One million zillion jillion dillion cotillion times later. Oh, well, hello there. Where were we? Oh yeah, it's been like two weeks. So life happens and this video got put on the back burner. Let's take a look at where we left off. Essentially, we've got our solar assistant dashboard here. I do like this dashboard. I didn't like it at first, I think because it wasn't like up to date. Let's just start at the beginning here. So we've got our dashboard and at the top, we've got a couple of different tabs, but on the main splash screen, so to speak, uh, it shows what the inverter mode is in. Uh, this is obviously solar slash battery mode right now because it's like middle of a sunny sunny day we've got you know what our power looks like from the grid what kind of power we're getting from the uh, solar arrays and our battery percentage down here we can see what the load is so I've actually just got two of those little box miners on this load right now another one's actually in here with me keeping the office a little warmer than it was one of the benefits of crypto mining and you can see right now we've got enough solar going on that it's just powering everything I think that it's pulling a little bit from the batteries just to kind of keep the cycle going kind of thing so to speak but there's nothing coming from the grid we can see we're completely off grid now which brings our attention to this graph on the side uh, at first this wasn't populating and it gave me a, a, like a couple of days just nothing showed up so if you have this issue or you get into it and start having issues like that just double click on anywhere in the graph it kind of zooms to that timeline we can see that it just zoomed out a little bit where if nothing was nothing was here it would zoom in not zoom in but it would zoom across the graph to that timeline yeah look at that that's great uh, but you can see that it's a, a it's a steady curve here we got our peak at about 11 11 o'clock 11 15 this morning at uh, 700 and something watts but for for example yesterday our red line here indicates the power that's coming from the grid we can see where it dropped off at what 8 10 in the morning when the sun came up and started shining and then it stayed off all the way till 6 30 ish at night this is a graph of the battery power uh, battery juice so to speak so we were running on battery power here at this time yesterday and this morning we've been we've been running on it as well down here we're charging 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 so below this line looks like it's when it's charging and then above the line is when we're actually discharging and using the battery power same thing down here we've got our our state of charge so we can kind of see our state of charge as well throughout here and we could dive deeper into charts with this tab up here that says charts you know the charts tab that's a good place to put it and we can go all the way back you know let's see last five years last two years last one year six months 90 days 30 days let's look at the last seven days so i actually took off the third miner uh, a couple of days ago we can see on 120 we went from 700 watts on the load down to 400 watts uh, and then it's just stayed steady ever since. So we can see that this wasn't a very sunny day. This is a pretty sunny day. Do like that it populates data like this for extended periods of time. I, I really enjoy that. And that we can we can look at this with a just real quick, you know, change in the drop down menu where watch power, it, there's a lot more drilling down to and it's a lot slower. It, it has a lot of lag to it, but this is, you know, this is gonna keep lots and lots of data. Look at that, all the way out to five years. Uh, what else is in charts? Um, our battery power chart, our, our battery state of charge, uh, PV voltage so we can see how much has been charging from solar. We can see the battery voltage going up and down. We can see our current voltage and the PV current. The battery temperature, I don't have a temperature sensor hooked up to the batteries from the inverter, so it's not gonna pull that kind of data. Grid voltage, inverter temperature, that's nice to know. Quite some spikes. Grid frequency, that's interesting to see. That's cool, I really, I really like 
like that all that data is readily available right there. I'm all about some charts and graphs and things. It gives you a nice summary right here on the last 30 days of usage. You can go in and change settings under power. So the inverter, I've got it set to SBU or solar battery utility. So it's going to use solar first, like we have right now, 640 watts available on solar. We're going to use that first to power our load. When enough solar is not available, battery is going to augment that so that the two together can power our load. And then when one goes away, it's going to be completely on battery. When the battery is uh, completely drained, it'll go back to utility. So SBU mode, so to speak. Um, and we could change that to solar first or utility first. Utility first so that if you're using, you know, your solar system as a backup, you could easily go in and, and quickly configure this. And then under configuration, where we would go through and make the changes on the, on the specific inverter model and the different ports that are being used. If we are able to make changes within the battery setup through, through the inverter, depending on the inverter, you can do that as well, all through this GUI. So if we went into settings, for the inverter, we can see we should be able to have multiple inverters here. The second inverter that I have is not recognized by this device, which that's fine. I, I didn't expect it to be, but I was hoping it would. So I plugged it in anyway to give it a shot. We could change our battery types from here. You could user define your own batteries, flooded batteries or AGM or gel batteries or whatever. I've got SLAs, so I'm using the AGM settings. I'm only going to charge my batteries from solar. Charging my batteries from the grid really defeats the purpose and what I'm trying to accomplish here. And really we can just go through and change all of the settings directly from this menu, which is pretty sweet. This was my rundown on the new solar assistant, solar power monitoring and management application. That's a mouthful. That's what she said. What do you think about this? If you have a solar setup now, what kind of app are you using to manage and monitor your devices your setup, your configuration. Is it something that the inverter or the solar company provided to you? And what is that? How does it, how does that work for you? How does it compare to this low cost solution? I mean, if you've already got a Raspberry Pi, this is perfect. Or like I did, you buy a cheap orange pie because that's all I'm going to use this thing for is just this single application on that one dedicated device. So if you got this far in the video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Let YouTube know that you enjoyed the video and help with the algorithm and getting more people to see it. This is the kind of content that you enjoy. Consider subscribing to the channel. We do all kinds of fun geek shit around here. You might just like it. And of course, thanks for watching. And this is a monitor, uh, uh, blah, blah, blah.